Ken Kratz put out a couple more messages yesterday over the last couple of days on X and like I've been doing I'm gonna go over them for the people that don't have the platform and have no intention of getting the platform. In this first message from Ken Kratz he's replying to case 10 here and he responds with it depends what you consider the other side they're talking about convicting a murderer it depends what you consider the other side what do you think the purpose of convicting a murderer was whose story were they telling did they leave anything out sometime in april i plan to disclose for the first time what i thought of convicting a murderer the entire production process it would be great to get the director sean Reck, the producer brenda schuler and host candace owens for a live sit-down interview that should be easy I don't imagine, I mean, maybe they'll get Candace Owens, but she's not even with the Daily Wire anymore. She's off doing her own thing. So maybe it may actually be easier to get her now, but I, I don't imagine, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't imagine they'll get Candace Owens. But like I said, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. That would be amazing to see. Uh, but I do think they'll pro he, Ken Kratz will probably get Sean Reck and Brenda. That'll be interesting as well. Candace Owens admitted she never spoke to me during the project. In fact, I never spoke to anyone from the Daily Wire Plus, not Ben Shapiro, nobody. Don't you think that's strange they never spoke to the lead prosecutor? I don't, and I'll explain that in a second. I wonder why, if you have nothing to hide, you hide nothing. Transparency is the answer, don't you think? The reason why, in my opinion, he never spoke to Ben Shapiro or Candace Owens um, is because they weren't a part of the project from the beginning. They were inserted later. They probably had zero communication with most people involved in the project other than, this is just me guessing, but I've been a part of this process before, so I, I kind of have, I, I know how it works a little bit, tiny bit. Um, they probably had absolutely nothing to do with most people involved in the project other than uh, the people that were making it, like Sean Reck and Brenda and whoever else is on that team. I, I, I don't see, feel there would have been any reason, unless there's a segment involving Candace, Owen, Candace Owens and Ken Kratz, uh, which would have had to have happened later, because this was done years before Candace Owens and Daily Wire got involved. It would have had to have brought Ken Kratz back for additional filming. Um, that's the only way they would have got Candace Owens and Ken Kratz together. Daily Wire bought the project and aired the project. They probably, like I said, had no communication with the most people involved. Um, that's why I think that is that happened. Again, I could be wrong, but that's generally how that process works especially with a project that would have been done way before people were attached to it. So the other day, Ken Kratz talked about a making a murderer film that was blocked from being released by the filmmakers and Columbia University. They're, they are the ones who hosted the film festival. I asked, why do people think that, uh, or why was this film blocked from being released? Uh, I didn't get any really good responses, but Ken Kratz responded with, Jessica McBride did an article on this topic very, very shortly after Making a Murderer was released. Try looking here. And I will look at that, not in this video, but I will have a look at it and see if it is interesting to see if there's any news in there. And if there is, I will make a video about it. And Ken Kratz also replied to a X message from IINNIT5244. Brenda already told several guilters about the fallout you two had. She also told TTM about the grimy details and her real thoughts about you. The details she gave were in-depth and make you look even more unhinged. I wonder if she made anything up about you. I'd, Ken Kratz responded with, I'd love to see these comments. I'd also love to read her 300-page deposition transcript from Colburn versus Netflix that her attorney is blocking from public scrutiny. Hashtag nothing to hide. Falling out. Oh my god, that is rich. The live sit-down interview will clear up those misunderstandings. That's assuming he can get a live 
sit-down interview with them. Then he replied to a post from TikTok Manitowoc. Again, the joke was known, not refuted. It's the fact you used Bobby to bring the joke into testimony when Mike O was the one who said it in police reports, and you had not put Mike O on the stand. He replied to TikTok Manitowoc, and included me, after having the night to interview Bobby during the night of February, 20, uh, February 14th, Happy Valentine's Day, the defense, in fact, found the reports that were sent to them summarizing the joke the next day, February 15th. Uh, I noted in my trial journal that the defense attempted to explain the joke may or may not have impact on the jury. Oh, by the way, as my journal was intended to track my journey through the trial, I recount my level of exhaustion. Still think I wrote this after the fact, Jerry Buting, and Attorney General. There is a big, um, a lot of people, there is a lot of people out there that think Ken Kratz did not write this trial journal at the time he says it was written. A lot of people think it was written later. Um, not during the trial. I guess uh, maybe over time we will find out. Then he replied to TikTok Manitowoc again. TikTok Manitowoc stated, very specifically brought up November 3rd as the date of the joke when we all know that never happened, meaning your notion about the jury hearing such sick humor should never have happened. As you know, Mike O reported said, no, Mike O's report said November 10th, which was impossible. Ken Crash responded with, read Dean Strang's cross-examine of Bobby. I honestly don't recall, but what date does best ever attorney Strang says it happened? I love how that he, like, throws random jabs in there at people. It's quite, uh... It's quite something. It's quite entertaining. Then he went back and forth with TikTok Manitowoc. Again, you purposely tried to influence the jury with prejudice at the moment, just like you tainted the jury pool for Brendan, ensuring he'd never get a fair trial. I wouldn't be surprised if the redacted part is somewhat of a confession of knowing exactly what you were doing. Wow. I'm interested in your opinion of having, my, of having tainted the jury pool by my comments to the media. Did anyone in the Avery jury ever ever mention my press conference or Brendan's confession? If they never mentioned it, do you still believe it impacted the jury somewhat in their deliberations? Last question. From where did Jerry Buting and Dean Strang want their jury pool? Here's a hint. I hope finding out this answer will cause you to stop discussing where the jury was going to be from. I will wait for your what about ism as your acknowledgement that you now know the truth. Woo. Things are getting deep, guys. Things are getting deep. And there's another one here from Vegas Ranger 1872. See, uh, day three, Ken Kratz, and still no answer. Seems a bit cowardly to me. Come on, answer the question. The question is, okay, Kratz uncancelled. Let's try to see who is the coward. I'm going to tweet this every day until you've answered the questions here. Let's start. And he lists a bunch of questions. Uh, let's see what Ken Kratz had to say in response. Michael Costa is your answer. In other words, it doesn't matter how many times you ask. Please move on. Interesting. Interesting. Then he responded to a message from Jack's, 60, from Jack's 1961. This seems to be the case. I've seen a few prosecutors in other states do less and get themselves in serious trouble. The bottom line for me is my understanding is that one of the prosecutor's functions is to ensure the process is held to legal standards. Can you imagine had Jerry Buting or Dean Strang did something along those lines? Oh, wait, they couldn't. Funny you say that. Strang and Buting did, men did bring a motion for some kind of sanction given what they deemed too much media. Jax, if that's who you really are, you seem to be a smart guy. Find Judges Willis' comments regarding pre-trial publicity, just keeping it real. O oh, zero eight eight five four C C T W three. Where do these people get these username states? This was written after the fact regarding Ken Kratz's trial journal. Brenda Schuler said so. And Ken Kratz said, please show me that quote.
TikTok Manitowoc responded with, I've never seen Brenda say anything regarding Ken Kratz's diary. Please keep in mind that Brenda is very quiet publicly with her tweets, and I would have called her out on it. That's from TikTok Manitowoc. Would be interesting in seeing her saying this as well. And she actually replied. Those are the messages from Ken Kratz over the last couple of days. Man, things are going to get interesting. So, thing that's going on. Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.